Today, I am in the capital of Hanoi, Vietnam, and this, my friends, is 500,000 of the country's finest Vietnamese dong. And what I want to find out in this video is, is it still possible to travel Vietnam on a $20 daily budget? We're going to be covering everything today from food to attractions and exploring the city, all the way to a little bit of leisure followed up by the accommodation at the end of the video. So what do you think? Do you think it's possible to still travel on $20 a day budget as a backpacker? Or do you think I'm going to completely blow this budget? Well, come along with me today and we'll find out exactly how much $20 will get you in the country's most expensive city. Right now, I'm around the main lake in the center of Hanoi and it's incredibly busy. There's people out taking photos, there's like groups of women out dancing and getting ready for the morning. Vietnam is a very, very morning-based society, at least that's what I've experienced so far. But now I need to head away from this lake a little bit to find something for breakfast that is very, very Vietnam and you know exactly what it's gonna be and as you all probably know this is pho not pronounced pho pronounced pho and it's a very popular noodle soup dish here in Vietnam in Vietnam it's traditional to eat noodle soup for breakfast and then you have something heavier like rice or bread for lunch and dinner you know a place is gonna be good for pho if it's got the little plastic seats and tables out the front and it's full of locals I was actually gonna to go to another place but just around the corner but it was full full of people and there was nowhere for me to sit. Here's some pro pho tips though. If you don't like coriander, make sure you tell them. They put coriander in every pho. Bo means beef and ge is chicken. Pho bo, beef pho, pho ge, pho chicken. <laughs> that was good. Come on. And that's the best thing about pho. It's very affordable. That one was actually 50,000 dong, which is Probably the more expensive side of pho. I found some for 35, usually it's around 40 to 45, but still only one tenth of our daily budget. And that's breakfast all in. And the thing with Hanoi is it's very walkable. Everything's within walking distance. That saves a lot of money. So let's go see our first sight of the day. So right now I'm in a place called Bak Ma Temple, which is right in the center of the old town of Hanoi. And it's quite often referred to as the oldest temple in Hanoi and it was thought to be built like in the 1000 AD but some people think it's built even earlier in the 9th century something like that. It was founded by Emperor Li Tai To who was thought to be the founder of Hanoi itself but then some archaeological evidence came up that suggests that Hanoi might have actually been around as a settlement since 3000 BC. That would technically make it an ancient civilization right? But this temple is absolutely beautiful. I thought I was gonna have to pay to get in but I didn't. Free! <laughs> Nothing from our budget for today but it's still beautiful to look at and there's a ton of temples like this around Vietnam and they're all absolutely stunning and the altar here is absolutely incredible I think it's called an altar I'm not really sure when it comes to these Buddhist temples but it's stunning the work is so intricate and then on the altar you always have your offerings as well which is like rice money meat sweet cigarettes oranges and then the most important thing you always find beer pyramids of beer and you know if I was going to have anyone offer anything to me, I'd want it to be beer as well. That was fun, hey? And completely free. That's all right. That means we have extra money for more fun stuff later. Maybe we can reinvest it from attractions into the leisure section. We'll see. Next up on the list of things to do today is the Imperial Citadel in Hanoi. If you've watched my Exploring Hanoi video, if you didn't, I'll link it down below. You'll know that I skipped this because it was really busy with like tourists and coaches and I thought it'd be really expensive. So I thought I'll save the budget and I won't go. But then I Googled it and it's not too bad. So let's go there now and see what I missed out on. But it's a 22 minute walk for here, which, you know, I don't really walk when I'm at home in Bali. So I don't mind, it's nice. It's good to get my uh, exercise and steps up on my watch. All right, I'll see you there. Do you remember this place from my last video that I skipped? It's still full of coaches. Whatever, let's go in, see what it's like. Hello, yeah, just one please. 30,000, one ticket. No problem. Thank Come on. You. And we're in. That's 30,000 for a ticket, which is just over a dollar. One dollar, 10 cents. It's nice and cheap. Nice. All right, now I'm at the Imperial Citadel of Thang Long, which was the original capital of Vietnam a very long time ago. It was built around the 11th century AD, around the 1000 and something mark, by the emperor at the time who moved the capital from another place to 
here, which at the time was called Dai La. And this is where the capital remained from the 11th century all the way until the 18th century. And it was also the base of operations for the Northern Vietnamese army during the war in the 90s. And now it's a tourist attraction. But it's cool to see, like this architecture could be, you know, over a thousand years old. And right now it's being used as an event space for I don't know, graduation or something like that, which is pretty cool. But I'm gonna give you a whistle stop tour of the Citadel. So it's actually 1010 AD that the citadel was shifted to here as the new capital. And this behind me is the south gate, which was mainly used by the emperors and kings to get into the inner wall of the Forbidden City. Yep, that's what it says. And we apparently go straight through here. Woo! Nice echo. And then under this glass here, which I think I can actually walk on, are the archaeological remains that were dug up and found in 1999. And it says on the sign over there, even though it's only a small amount, apparently all of these remains go under all of the structure and they come from the periods before this place was built. Looks like there's co-working spaces in here. That's pretty dope. More information. They don't look Vietnamese. <laughs> I think this has more to do with the French than the Vietnamese. Just a very small exhibition that's in collaboration with the French. Didn't expect that here, but hey. <laughs> so these behind me are the dragon steps, and at the top of the dragon steps is where the palace used to be for many, many, many years until the French came and knocked it down in the 1800s to replace it with a French building. So up there, what you can see is not actually the palace. Sneaky, it's actually a cardboard cutout or something <laughs> with a print on it. Still pretty cool though to see what it might have looked like. And this thing behind me is the gates of the dwelling palace under Nguyen dynasty. Nguyen. I think it's Nguyen. <laughs> it's very old. <laughs> The revolutionary relics of building and bunker D67. It says, as the name suggests, these were built in 1967 to house important meetings of the Politburo and the Central Military Commission, the Ministry of National Defense and the People's Army of Vietnam during the American War. There's a route to follow. Now we're going into the bunker. One door and another door. Hao Lao, aka the Ladies' Pavilion, aka the Princess Pavilion. I think you see where I'm going with this. It was a wooden structure that dates back from the Nguyen Dynasty and was restituted during the French colonial period. This is what it looks like restored 200 years ago. More stairs. It's very empty in this Ladies' Pavilion. There's nothing in here, it's just a building. Oh, I stand corrected. There's a little temple. And storage as well. <laughs> what? These ladies were small. Oh. Okay, I think that's it for the Imperial Citadel. Oh, there's one more thing I want to see. I haven't seen it yet. Let's go see if I can find it. Secret bunker entrance. Goes down deep. I don't know if you can see. Whoa. This isn't the last thing I wanted to see, but it's pretty cool. It's the Operational Command Bunker, and there is also the Bunker of Operation Department, also known as Bunker T1, which is once the center of information and operations for the general staff of the People's Army of Vietnam. So much history today. I've just noticed that I'm all the way up here looking for this last thing, when it's all the way down by the entrance here, number 10. All right, let's go find it. Come up some more stairs to show you what I'm looking for. All the way from down there. This is the second floor of the main gate that we saw at the very beginning. And over there in the distance is number 10 on the map. Kaidai or the Hanoi Flag Tower, which is built around 1805 to 1812 on the former foundation of Tam Mon, the outer gate of the Forbidden City, and towers over 33 meters tall. All right, I think we're gonna call it a day at the Citadel. Not bad for 30,000 dong. Like, you get to see a lot here. There's a lot of history and the buildings are beautiful anyway instead of making the long 30 minute walk back to the city center we're gonna cheat and use some of our budget to skip that part so i'm holding one yeah thank you oh, oh there we go good come on 
The Granville Gojek is by far the best way to get around town. You'll get incredibly fair prices, it's quick, and they're pretty good, they're pretty nice people. All right, it's now two o'clock in the afternoon, which means it's time for some lunch. And we're gonna go for something a little bit more French inspired, but still Vietnamese. Can I get one banh mi with ham? Okay. Yeah, thank you. Come on, so we got ourselves a banh mi for lunch, which I've also had a lot of times since I've been on this trip. I don't actually know if it's French inspired. It comes in a baguette, and I feel like bread isn't very Southeast Asian. It's an assumption. Let me know in the comments. Is it French inspired, or was it here before the French came? Either way, it's really cheap, only 30,000 dong. I mean, this is one of the best ones I've had. All right, all together, the bun me and the coke were 50,000. That brings us down to our budget of still 356,000 dong. So we're gonna head back down to the lake. I'm gonna book the accommodation for tonight. And then there's something I've seen on the lake that I've been looking at for the last week or so that I wanna go in. And I think today's the day. So let's get to the lake. All right, we are back by the lake and it's time to book some accommodation. Let's go on here. So there were two apps that I usually use and that's booking.com and Agoda. So let's go straight on to booking.com. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort from the lowest price. And here we are, green homestay, 2.6. We want the city center. See what options I'm getting. So not bad, in the city center, I'm getting a six bed dormitory. It says one large double bed as well, which is interesting, but it's only $8 a night. So let's go ahead and pick that one. So that's not too bad for booking. So let's try Goda instead. Ah, see, so this is cheaper. Green homestay, 7.9 reviews, very good. 82 verified reviews. And we're looking at a bed in an eight bed mixed dormitory. It's 144,000 and we've just saved ourselves 50,000. All right, but now we got our accommodation. There's something on the lake that I've been wanting to see for ages and I believe it's a temple, but I don't know. The bridge looks great at night, it lights up. So let's go see for ourselves. And this is it, but I need to find out where to pay because it's not in the gate, I know that. I think it's here. Of course, she's efficient. <laughs> there was no hanging around there. Okay, I'm in. And I don't know if this place is busy because it's actually good or whether it's just because it's right in the center of town. I suppose we'll find out. Seems like the bridge itself is a very popular photo spot, especially with people with their kids. I don't think I've seen more people taking pictures of their kids than on this bridge. <laughs> Maybe it's very popular for that. Once you get past that bridge, it's very empty. <laughs> I think people are paying for the bridge, mainly. I mean, there's some people over here, actually, but people are definitely paying for the uh, the photo opportunity on the bridge. But for 30K, you can't complain. All right, turns out that was pretty cool. You walk through the main gate, you go around the corner, there's like a bandstand area, I don't really know what to call it. You have the main temple, which is beautiful as always, they always are, and then, there's a room with two turtles in glass cases. And I assumed the turtles were plastic, but I read the notice board, apparently they're not. <laughs> apparently they're real and they used to live in this lake. And they're important because they're one of the four sacred animals in Vietnamese folklore, because back in the third century BC, one of the turtles lent their claws to one of the kings for an archery or something like that. And then in the 15th century, one of the turtles brought a sword out, a golden sword, and then henceforth it was called the golden sword turtle or the sword turtle or something. And he lent it to the king at the time in the 15th century so he could fight back the Ming invaders from China. And then when he won, he gave the sword back to the turtle. I don't know how true that is, but it's a very nice folklore like story to tell for sure. And then apparently the turtle in the case closest to the door died in 1967, weighing 250 kilos. And then the other one furthest away from the door died in 2016, so pretty recent. And then they were preserved and stuffed and left on this temple for everyone else to see. I don't know. That's what the information board said anyway. <laughs> but I have 186,000 dong left, which I wanted to use to get a massage and then go out to the street market for dinner later. I think it's gonna have to be about 100 to 120K. Anything above that, then I'm not gonna be able to eat later. <laughs> yeah, but let's walk around. There's plenty of places to find massages, so I do kind of want one though. Oh dear. So it looks like I've blown it with a massage. I've been to a few different places, looked at a few different prices, and it looks like to be about a minimum of 150,000 for a foot massage. I could do that, or 180,000 for a 30 minute body massage, but then I won't eat, so <laughs> I think I'd choose food. So either we'll do something else, or I'll gorge later on food at the night market and have an absolute feast. I don't know yet, we'll see. All right, as you can probably now tell, it's nighttime, so now, 
I have 182,000 Vietnamese dong to get some dinner. Uh, and he, it would be really easy for me to go to McDonald's and spend it, but that would be boring, wouldn't it? So instead, I'm just gonna walk around the night market because it's a Saturday. But before we go there, there is something I saw walking down this road that I want to try. So let's go grab one of them. Hello. Yeah, one. It actually says up there, Donut Kebab Trang An. So maybe it's just a Vietnamese Donut Kebab. <laughs> So yeah, it was essentially kebab meat with some lettuce, some onions, some sauce, some mustard. Let's try it. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, that's real good. Mm. If you ever come to Vietnam, I recommend one of these. And it was only 25,000, which brings us down to something like 158,000 now to use at the night market, which is great. We'll get a few meals and some dessert. See you at the night market. At this particular night market, you'll find that most of the stalls down the center are just like bags and stuff you can buy. And then you'll find most of the food on the crossroads in between them. It's actually surprising. I was here last night and I walked all the way to the end of the market and it's a lot longer than you think it is. But let's see if we can find my first food. Hello. Hello. Uh, how many? One, two sausages and one of these. One. Come on. So it's not very Vietnamese, but I've been wanting to try these sausage on a stick for a while. I've seen it all over Vietnam in the street food and it's piqued my interest. What it is, is like a cut sausage, like a Frankfurt uh, German mini thing. And then while I was there, I thought I better also try this, which I'm not entirely sure what it is. Chicken, pork, could be anything. We'll try it. And the best thing is, all three of these were only 35K. I think the sausages are 10 and this thing was 15. Pretty cheap. It tastes exactly how I expected it to, but it's good. YouTube. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> All right, now this one. Let's see if I can figure out what it is. I'm gonna go ahead and assume pork. It tastes like pork. If you do know what it is, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know. But it's really good though. Very juicy, very nice. What's your YouTube channel? Ryan Lee Banks. <laughs> Ryan Lee Banks. Ryan Lee Banks. Mm -hmm. There's one Dawood I always see. Yeah? That guy always traveling all over India and everywhere. Yeah. And all. He tried to and all. Oh, yeah. thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, you too. What a friendly man. Indians love YouTube. They love watching YouTube. Honestly, if you want to see this night market in full swing, definitely come around 8 o'clock, not 7 o'clock. I don't know what time it finishes either, so if it starts at 8, I assume it's pretty late. Honestly, there's not many food options here yet, or maybe there will be later, but I don't have time to hang around today. So I'm going to bail on the night market and head out into the city instead and see what I can find in the city. Hello. Hello. One. One or guest place. So I was just giving up walking out the market, the end of it, which is there, by the way. And I found the Vietnamese pancake or Ban Nguang. Ban Trang Nguan. I've had these before. Very nice. It'll be a, a good addition to the video. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, so this is more colloquially English known as a Vietnamese pancake or a Vietnamese pizza. The first one I had in my very first video here in Vietnam in Ho Chi Minh City it was really good. It had Dairy Lee in it. I haven't found one like that since, but let's try it. It's tasty, but it's not as good as the first one I have. Hello. One chocolate. Thank you. We see 15,000 dong. And it's really tasty. Oh God. There's one more thing I want to finish the night off with. And then I'm done. Let's go to the shop. Thank you. <laughs> I did not mean for that to happen. Anyway, cheers. It's so hard to find a quiet, peaceful area around the lake at this time of night. There is music on all corners. I don't know if you can hear it. So the last thing that I really wanted to try is I've seen this in the Circle K's around here and it piqued my interest. It's quite expensive, 35,000, but we had the budget for it. It says cheesecake, but it's soft and squishy like an American pancake. It kind of feels like plastic. There's paper around that. I just bit through paper. Yeah. Okay. Take two. <laughs> It's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a cheesecake flavored pancake. So we've reached the end of the video. That cheesecake thing was 35,000. The beer, 16,000 dong. So we actually still have 36,000 dong left. But I have been tallying up today what we've been doing. 
So let's have a recap. I spent 50 on pho for breakfast, zero at Buckmar Temple, 30 to get into the Citadel, 14K on a Gojek, 50,000 on a Bummy for lunch and a Coke, 144,000 on a hostel, which maybe we could probably use the 36,000 at the end to get a better one, 30,000 to get into the Water Temple, 25 on the kebab, 35 on the street sausages, 20 on the Vietnamese pancake, 15 on ice cream, uh, 51,000 on a pancake and beer. And that leaves us with 36,000 of our itinerary. So what do you think? Do you think Vietnam is still cheap enough to travel on $20 a day? Because I do. In fact, I think you could probably even do it for less. I actually struggled towards the end today to finish off the budget that I've given myself. And, you know, we still didn't finish it. Bear in mind that this is, in my experience, the most expensive city in Vietnam. But let me know in the comments, what do you think? And if you like this video, subscribe. I gotta get up really early tomorrow. I have a video that I really do not want to film. And the last thing I wanna do is spend 35 hours on a train with three strangers that I don't know. But tickets are booked, it's gotta be done, and I'll do it for you guys. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm trying to hit 10,000 by the end of the year, and I'll see you again in the next one.